This video is supported by Golden Era Muscle. Please visit goldeneramuscle.com for training information and supplements. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I would like to address a very important question and that is whether the androgens that are found in the egg yolk, would they actually have an anabolic effect in humans, in us people that train, in lifters? Now this follows from my recent video where I actually uh, presented a research article which lists the hormones that are actually found in the egg yolk. Um, it's all well and good that the egg yolk contains all these hormones, but the big question is, can they actually have an anabolic effect? So let's have a look at what the science actually out there says. So the research article that I recently covered was um, called Yolk Concentrations of Hormones in Glucose and Egg White and Egg Dimensions in an Incubated chicken eggs in relation to egg sex and hen body weight. As you can see from the hormonal profile of the egg yolk, one can find testosterone, estrogen, androstenedione, progesterone and dihydrotestosterone, albeit at very low levels. All of these measurements are in milligrams of yolk. So the measurements there are just picograms per milligram of yolk. Okay, so it's all well and good that the egg yolk contains a lot of this this wonderful hormonal profile and I mean these hormones are mostly androgenic except for estrogen of course um, so so what you you eat your egg raw or runny and it contains um, the yolk contains these hormones but can your body actually absorb them that's the big question so I had a look at some research articles on the effects of lipids that is fats from your diet and whether they can actually help in the absorption of hormones when they when the administration is through the oral route. So here we have a uh, an article from the clinic uh, clinical endocrinology um, journal, and the title is the effect of food composition on so the effect of food composition on serum testosterone levels after oral administration of andriol testocaps. So the andriol testocaps, as you can read, um, are an oral formulation of testosterone under canoate. And the wonderful thing about this particular research article is that it actually showed, if you look at the results, that on a low lipid diet, the absorption, the bioavailability, that is, uh, and, and absorption of testosterone was actually low. But when a meal that actually um, was eaten containing a higher lipid level, 19 uh, grams or even up to 44 grams, this actually raised the bioavailability of, uh, bio of testosterone. Now, it wasn't necessary to go to that much of a high lipid level of 44 grams. 19 grams was sufficient. And this basically tells us that if we uh, were to actually somehow uh, take a hormone um, through oral administration, that if we are actually um, also at the same time taking in lipids, that is fats, the bioavailability of this particular um, administered, orally administered hormone would be higher. Um, let's get more into the science of this. When we look at the introduction of this particular article, I actually downloaded and had a good read of it, um, I found some very interesting things. For example, what, one of the biggest problems with the oral administration, for example, of testosterone, in particular crystalline testosterone, is that although, as, as it says here, although testosterone itself is absorbed well after oral administration, the problem is that it passes through the liver, thereby inactivating almost, I mean, it's almost 100% of it is, is inactivated and therefore barely anything um, is absorbed. Um, but this is um, only occurring in crystalline testosterone and therefore because crystalline testosterone is broken down by the liver uh, it doesn't really increase serum testosterone at all. However um, when we look at this andriol testo cap um, it's actually a solution of testosterone in an oily vehicle that is it is um, actually surrounded by lipids um, and it is administered in a, in a gelatin capsule so what the, the, the thing is that this oily vehicle that surrounds the testosterone or that carries the testosterone actually increases the absorption and what this oily vehicle is is an actual it's actually called a chylomicron and the testosterone molecules are actually included in these 
chylomicrons, which actually increase the absorption in the circulation. Um, and uh, well, actually, it bypasses the liver, gains access into the circulation. You have a, a proper absorption of testosterone. What does this all mean? Well, I've summarized it. Oral administered crystalline testosterone is metabolized by the liver, and therefore you don't get good, good uh, absorption uh, through crystalline testosterone. But if the testosterone is delivered in an oily vehicle, this increases the absorption of testosterone. And the wonderful thing about eggs is that, for example, cholesterol is delivered in chylomicrons, and that's why it raises your, it, it, you, you will have increased cholesterol when you ingest, ingest eggs. But the question is, what about the androgens? And this is the big question. Now we know that egg yolks contain these hormones, and egg yolks obviously deliver many of the, their fatty nutrients and possibly these hormones through, uh, through chylomicrons. So does this mean that, I mean, this is all theoretical, but does it mean, therefore, that the testosterone that is found in yolk can actually be absorbed? I, I think it can, but it's just a theory. So in theory, it is possible that the hormones that are found in egg yolks actually bypass the liver and could be uh, absorbed by us and actually have an anabolic effect. Now the questions that actually remain are, are several. <clears throat> what would be the half time of these hormones in the body? I mean, these androgens could uh, have an anabolic effect, but if their half, half time is very short, then this anabolic effect will be very small. Another question is, for example, what happens when they bypass the liver? Um, I mean, they're still in the um, circulating in the bloodstream where they could, uh, for example, bind to sex hormone binding globulin, which, for example, it doesn't matter how high your, uh, your total testosterone is. If a lot of it is bound to this protein, to this uh, sex hormone binding globulin, then your free testosterone would be very low. I guess the question then is, what do these hormones that are found in the egg yolk, I mean, how do they actually affect your free circulating test, uh, your, your free circulating hormones overall, your whole hormonal profile? Is it and an, does it actually create an anabolic environment in your in your circulation in your bloodstream? That's another question. I mean, there's so many questions. I mean, it, the, the perfect experiment, as I've listed here in point three, ideally, we could trace these hormones. For example, they could be labeled radioactively. And in, in tracing them through the uh, digestive system, their entrance into the bloodstream, we could then ascertain the fate of these hormones once they are ingested. What actually happens? What's the subsequent effect in, 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 a, in for example, in resistance trained athletes? Do we actually have an anabolic effect? This would be an amazing experiment to actually do if we could actually trace these hormones uh, through, after ingestion. This would be great. And the, the last question is, if they actually do have an, a, a small anabolic effect, how many eggs could really have a large anabolic effect? So um, th there, there's a lot of questions that, that are raised from this. Again, I repeat, this is all theory and I'm just having fun with it. But I think I, I, I'm raising some, some pretty interesting questions here. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Um, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, I mean... If you've uh, liked the video, of course, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and again, uh, let me know what you think. Um, thanks for watching. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now.